The Senator from Washington. President, I rise today to join my colleagues in asking for the passage of the Farm Bill that we're going to have a vote on here shortly. And I want to thank my colleague, uh, the Chair of the Agricultural Committee from Michigan, for her uh, unbelievable work on this very important policy for America. I know she understands these issues well because while everybody thinks of Michigan as a manufacturing state, it also is a very big agricultural state, and we share a lot of the same uh, crops being kind of on a northern plateau, so apples and wine and a variety of things. And I want to certainly thank her for her help and support on getting an important new uh, program in our school lunches for uh, very nutritious peas and lentils called Pulse Crops, and to thank her for her help on that. Uh, but Mr. President, I rise today to talk about the importance of the Farm Bill because it is a jobs bill for our nation. Two years ago, I joined my colleague, Senator Johans from Nebraska, and sent a bipartisan letter with 44 senators saying it was time to act on the Farm Bill because we thought it was so important for our economy as we were still struggling coming out of a recession. And so today, it's finally here, that opportunity to put all that hard work into a, a bill that goes to the president's desk. Uh, agriculture employs 16 million Americans, and it produces exports worth $115 billion of agricultural products to markets around the world. I don't think we always focus on that. A lot of times we come out here and we talk about the individual crops in our state or the individual focus, but what we really need to understand is that it is a very big product for the United States. And we live in a very competitive global economy. And one of the biggest advantages that we have in that global economy is that we in the United States of America know how to grow things. So the emerging middle class around the world can now afford to eat higher quality products. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce CEO Tom Donahue, I think, put it best in a speech that he gave about the global marketplace last year. He said, quote, you play to your strengths. You leverage your advantages, and then you find ways to improve them, and one of the greatest strengths in America is agriculture." End quote. Mr. Donahue said those remarks as an advantage of what innovation is driving in American agriculture. And he's absolutely right, because not only do we know how to grow things, we also know how to innovate. And there's a lot of innovation going on in the ag economy. In fact, there are some people in the Pacific Northwest that say now there's as much investment going into new innovation in agriculture as there were uh, recently in high tech or even green energy. So people get it. It's a great investment. I've seen in Washington State cutting edge research done at our labs in Prosser to new wheat rotation crops in the, in the, in the Palouse to savvy entrepreneurs making connections like getting Washington cherries into the new Korean market. So simply put, this is a growing, growing opportunity for the U.S. economy. Americans, farm, farmers, and businesses are seeing demand for their products rise on two fronts. First, American consumers want to buy their products directly from the farms in their communities. So that means that the farm are creating product for exactly what their end customer wants. And because they're doing that, they can make more money on delivering to the end customer exactly the kind of product that they want. And secondly, a rising middle class in places like Asia to South America want to use their newfound spending power on purchasing our products as well. So this farm bill helps on both of those fronts. Again, thanks to the chairwoman from Michigan. Uh, it helps get more goods to the market, and whether that's a farmer's market around the corner from your local supermarket or whether that's a new uh, market in South Korea. In 2030, China's middle class will have 1 billion people. That's up from 150 million today. And India's middle class will grow by more than 800 percent. And maybe because we sit on the Pacific, just like the uh, presiding officer, you know how important it is to get products to those marketplaces. In 2012, the United Nations reported that the world will need 70 percent more food by the middle of the century. This is a tremendous opportunity, but only if Congress acts today and passes the Farm Bill. We need to maintain our investment in research and export so American farmers can thrive and win in the expanding global marketplace. I'm confident if we do that, our farmers and our businesses 
and we make sure that they will have a level playing field. If they do, then we will win. But other countries are playing for keeps too. Every farmer around the world wants access to that rising middle class. <laughs> the European Union spent $700 million on export promotion for food products in 2011. That's nearly three times as much as America spent. And China is planning to boost its agriculture investment over the next decade. It's a sentiment that I heard in October when I visited one of our wholesalers when he was talking to an overseas client. He was talking about export and agriculture leaders in Washington state and how other countries were starting to use the, particularly the apple market to try to open new opportunities. So that's why we need to increase opportunities within the farm bill and to move forward on trade deals that help open the door to new agricultural markets. That will help unleash an entrepreneurial spirit that we really need to be aggressive about. Many people have heard of Walla Walla, or maybe you haven't, or maybe you just thought that was a term, but Walla Walla is a great community in the southeast corner of our state with 30,000 people, and it is deeply, deeply tied to the global economy. It has wine and wheat and peas and lentils, and the farmers there, I know, are very appreciative of the Columbia Free Trade Agreement. They thanked me many times for making sure that that got passed. I can tell you that many of those farmers went to Bogota to try to sell American wheat to the growing Colombian middle class. And that is what entrepreneurship in America is all about. So Congress must not dampen our entrepreneurial spirit. Farmers need to start this season and make sure that they can put long-term plans in place. Then the seeds that will be planted, the fields that will be harvested, the crops that will be shipped, the smart targeted investments towards those new international markets will be done. That's what this farm bill is about. The bill, I can tell you, is a compromise, and again, I thank the chairwoman for her hard work because I know how hard she worked on forging those compromises. I can tell you that it cuts the SNAP program far more than I would have cut it. I was one of 26 senators who voted for the amendment my colleague from New York offered to restore those cuts, but it is time that we move forward. I'd like to take a second to just talk about the details of three reasons why people should be for this farm bill. First, as I talked about, it continues to ex uh, expand the export programs that are so important for America's new markets. And while I might have been for a mo more robust program, some of my colleagues uh, obviously haven't quite understood why this is such a great benefit to market U.S. products around the globe. I think some people think of big global corporations and think, oh, well, why do you need that? Well, I can tell you when I'm talking about apples or cherries or pears, these aren't big corporations. They're a collective of hundreds or thousands of farmers working together. And when the MAP program helps target getting people in the Asian market to consume those products. It's a win-win situation for America. Secondly, this bill funds research making our crops stronger and healthier and more competitive. And third, it starts initiatives on products like the Pulse crop that I think could be so beneficial to us over the long run with new, as I said, school lunches, but just healthier products. Our new farm bill will do the research on specialty crops that are so important for us in the Pacific Northwest. This is the first time in this farm bill that the reauthorization makes long-term investment in specialty crop block grant programs and specialty crop research initiatives. Again, I wanna thank the gentlewoman from Michigan for her help on that, understanding how important these specialty crops are. They are not, uh, I think everybody in America knows and around the world uh, knows the brand of Washington apples. Uh, I can tell you I've been in the Chinese marketplace and seen how people took off the Washington label, particularly on Fuji apples, and tried to stick it on other apples because they knew that if that sticker was on that apple that everybody in China would consume those apples even though they weren't really Washington Fujis. So, what this specialty uh, research initiative does is said that we are going to not let apples and pears and cherries uh, basically constantly fall off the radar as it relates to research, but they will be a permanent part of a program for research 
and have a block grant program so that they can uh, basically continue to uh, do the research that's needed. And again, I, I, if any of my colleagues have ever had a chance to visit the research facilities within their state, they'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you should go and do it. But when you are fighting against uh, or being, uh, let's just say, on a competitive field with Australia or China or anybody else when it comes to apples, we have constantly have to answer questions about phytosanitary issues. We have constantly uh, talk about various uh, ways to make sure we gain access to those marketplaces. And the research, just science and research, is the only way we can fight down some of these trade barriers that exist when our products can't get into these countries. So we need to make sure that we continue to, to fight that. And uh, uh, lastly, I just want to say I'm very pleased by the fact that pulse crops, uh, peas, lentils, uh, things like uh, chickpeas, things that you know people eat. I'm sure a lot of people ate a lot of hummus over the weekend while they were watching the Super Bowl and the Seattle Seahawk victory. But uh, hummus is a crop that has exploded 500% in the last uh, 15 years. It's definitely a product that people have been consuming all over the world for a long time, but we in the United States are starting to consume more of it. And the fact that that product has been uh, such a huge increase has given our farmers in Washington State great opportunity. But this product is also a very uh, healthy product and one that we fought hard to make sure would be included in a new school lunch program something where students could get access to a high-protein, high-fiber product that certainly is more affordable for our schools. So we think between the research that's going to go on on pulse crop derivatives and the fact that school lunches are now going to have the opportunity to serve pulse crops more aggressively, we're very, very excited about this farm bill. I want to thank my colleagues uh, in the Senate, Senator Crapo and Rish, and my uh, colleague, uh, um, from South Dakota for also helping with this because this certainly was, and North Dakota, I should say, both uh, uh, both states were very, very big on these pulse crops and certainly helped to make sure that this stayed in the conference report. So again, to uh, all my colleagues, uh, please vote for a bill that will really help our economy, that will really help us tackle that growing middle class around the world and keep America putting great products on those market shelves and helping create more jobs in the United States. Uh, I thank uh, the, the President, I yield the floor.